Welcome to Science Explorations. Today's lab is all about ocean currents. We're going to use colored water to see how water currents move in the ocean. How do we make a current? We poke a hole in a paper cup, we fill a cup with colored water, and set it in a tub filled with regular clear water. Then we let the water flow out. We use colored water so that we can see and identify the water in the current as it flows into the rest of our ocean. Before we begin, I want to talk about the concept of pressure, since it's pressure that will send the colored water out through the little hole in the cup. Pressure is simply a force pushing on an area, like the force of these books pushing down on your lap. The more books we add, the higher the pressure on your lap. You can think of water in a cup or in the ocean in the same way, as layers of water resting on each other. The pressure at any level of the cup depends on how much water is sitting on top of it. So the pressure on the bottom of the cup is higher than the pressure at the top of the cup. For this lab, also notice that in order for a cup full of water to rest on the bottom of the tub without floating off, the water level in the cup needs to be higher than the water level in the tub. Let's get back to our ocean currents. I'd like to see what happens when I let a warm current and a cold current encounter each other in the ocean. Then, as a control, I'll watch what happens when I let two currents of the same temperature encounter each other. Let's set up our first activity. I want to poke a hole in the water cups to allow the warm and cold water currents to flow into my ocean. I'm going to measure about three quarters of an inch, or you know what, let's um, call it two centimeters from the bottom of my cup. And I'm going to poke a push pin through. I like to hold the pin and then um, I have my finger nearby in the back but not near enough that it's going to get poked. And there it is. We'll do the same thing with the other one. And there we have it. So here's my warm water and my cold water. I'll put some red food coloring into my warm water and some blue coloring into my cold water. Now I can use the colors to remind me that the red water is warm and the blue water is cold. Now we place our warm and cold water into our tub, which represents the ocean. We carefully fill the tub with room temperature water. We want the level of the ocean water to be higher than the push pins, but not as high as the water level in the cups, or else the cups may start to float. Now I'll remove the push pins from the cups, and the pressure of the water above the level of the hole in each cup causes the cold blue water and the warm red water to flow into the tub. Because the red water is warm, it is less dense than the ocean water, and the warm red water rises to form a layer on top of the clear water. In contrast, the blue water is cold, so it is more dense than the ocean water, and the cold blue water sinks to the bottom. As the currents of different temperatures flow, they transfer heat through the ocean in a process known as convection. Now let's set up a control with the red and blue currents at the same temperature as each other and at the same temperature as the water in the tub. This time, the red water, blue water, and ocean water are all at the same temperature, so they also have the same density. And with all the water at the same temperature, we see that the currents don't separate out into layers. Instead, the mixing of the currents is driven by the simple force of the water 
coming out of the holes in the two cups. In this video, we've seen how to model ocean currents using colored water and a clear tub. You can try this activity yourself. And here's some food for thought. This is also a good model of how air currents and warm and cold fronts move through the atmosphere.